Afternoon Talk uh-huh. on SAFM. Right, so we do this every afternoon, the second half of the Afternoon Talk Show, where we put somebody in the spotlight. And I ask sort of people to guess, by the way, Leanne said, I wonder who do you think it's going to be? Some people sort of battle to get it right. And maybe it's because I use the word, I said, probably South Africa's best female anchor and they had difficulty in finding that out and I was rather disappointed with that I thought that's pretty simple anyway anyway glad to have you in the spot Leanne thanks for joining us Leanne Manners I should say for those that don't know thank yeah. you very much Ashraf good to be here yeah indeed so now, now you've got what a couple about a couple of weeks couple of months before you go off the air once again yeah a couple of weeks actually um, I don't know when as yet I'm going to push myself to the limit and, and, and for I suppose listeners who don't know why I'm going off mm-hmm. air because I am heavily pregnant although people are still asking me are you pregnant are you pregnant really yeah, yeah. No. They're How still do you explain the, the weight increase? Then? I have no idea what I am if I'm not pregnant, but <laughs> I, I shudder to think what's going through people's minds. Now, now let's <laughs> just get this out of the way then. So, so the plan is, okay, you give birth and then, and then what? Well, then I, back when? I, uh, probably about three or four months. It depends. Um, I did it with my son. It was the same mm, sort mm, of thing. Mm, mm. I think I stayed over about three and a half months with, with, with Alexandra. And, and, and you managed? And, uh, well, it was easier to come back to work, to be honest with you. Of course. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's hard work being a mother it really really is <laughs> now let's talk about four o'clock in the morning is that the time you get up uh, four o'clock in the morning that's when my alarm clock goes off it every single morning uh, obviously except for a saturday and a sunday and uh it's it's yeah it's it's something you get used to it has been going off for uh, almost nine years now. Mm. So wait, four, four o'clock is wake up time or first alarm time? Four o'clock is the first alarm time. Let's okay. get this straight because okay. I, I don't think I can get up at four o'clock. <laughs> Although I do when we're doing outside broadcasts or and when we're out on location. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're up at 3.30. Yeah. You're up wow. at 3.30. You are traveling to the location. You then get to the, the, the venue where you're broadcasting from. You then have to get makeup done. You then mm, have to mm, mm. get on air, test the cameras. I mean, it's it's just not that I test the cameras, but obviously the Production yeah, crew and need, to, need do you all that. to be there to test it, and you well. kind of need to be there. But but it is, it's it's not a job for the faint-hearted. Waking mm. up and doing the morning so show. How, how then do you manage? I, mean, I take it you watched the soccer last night. Did you then watch till what eleven thirty or so? I, I watched the whole thing. I know we were. I was yeah. SMSing you. I said enjoy enjoy the soccer, <laughs> and I, I actually watched the whole thing. I really enjoyed that match last night. So because by the way, John Pullman, who I worked with at. at um, uh, on SAFM before, I mean, he, he would, maybe not for a game like this, but for a Champions League game, he would record the game and watch the second half of the oh, match no. when he's having breakfast at home in the morning before he comes to Are work. you kidding me? No, that's... Yeah. that's so the second half at about 4.30 or 5 a.m. Sure. But not, not a game like a, a final of this sort, of course. No, that that's... I know that's far too organized for me. I, I take it as it comes, I must say. I mean, I tried to watch most of the matches during the, the UA, um, during the Euro, but I was... I, I did as much as I could, but I fell asleep during all of them. Yeah, so well, it was a good, it's a good sleep medicine. <laughs> all right, let me invite uh, callers. If you want to say hi, 0891-104207. 0891-104207. My guest in the spotlight is Leanne Manners, the anchor, co-anchor of Morning Live. Uh, and she'll take a break from that show for the next, well, in a few weeks' time, maybe, when she's going to give birth. So we'll talk to her maybe four months or so later. So probably the last chance you're going to get a chance to talk to her now if you do so right away. 0891 104207. SMS is 34701. That'll cost you two ends if you want to tweet me uh, on Twitter, Ashraf Garda1. And you can also comment on Facebook. And already a couple of people, by the way, Leanne, saying that they absolutely love what you do which i'll probably ask you how important is that the fact that very that you get that sort of feedback well it is very important because i think you know having people appreciate what you do it it keeps you going um and and having just the normal person coming up to you and chatting to you and saying i watch you every morning and i love watching you Mm -hmm. and you know it really helps it really does because (laughs) you know you never get thanked for what you do. We, we work in a very and thankless that, job. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's what we do. So, so typically, you, you know, you're, you're in a shopping center. We'll talk about your store just now. You're in, a, well, you're in Santon City because that's where yeah. your store is. On a typical day, how many people would, would recognize you enough to come up? Because others may recognize and not come up. Sure. No, but every day there's at least uh, uh, at least two people on on any given day. But that's that's the minimum. You know, it happens constantly everywhere I go doesn't matter where how or what there's there's always somebody recognizing you but but i have i turn a blind eye to it these days i actually 
I'm so I switch off at eight o'clock in the morning, and what happens thereafter happens. And sometimes I actually I get pulled out of my own little world when someone mm-hmm. says, "Oh, I saw you this morning." I'm like, "Where? Where did you see me?" Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Of you yes. Uh, I know. I'm like, yes, of course. Yes, you did see me this morning. Hello. So my, I, I feel almost very removed from what I do because I see what I do as a job, as as an absolute and utter job between six and eight in the morning, and There's then my no life job begins. Then. You don't no, the job. not at all. Not at all. all. Right. I, I well, don't. We'll talk about that. Leanne Manners with me in the spotlight. Let's get to some of the callers. I have lots of questions I want to ask you, but I want to give people a chance to do just that as well. Uh, Londina, you're first up from uh, from Queenstown. Hi. Yes, Ashraf. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah, go go for it. Leanne's listening. I'm sure you want to talk to her, not Hello. to me. Hi, Wendila. Hey. Leanne. Yes. Are you listening? I am, I am, I am, I'm hanging on your every word. <laughs> I've been watching you since my school days now. Oh, I've been me. following you and Buya. And it, it, you are the best. Ah, oh, you are so kind. You <laughs> are the best. You're the real thing. Thank you. Why, you why is she the best? You, you haven't told us why. Sir? Why, why is she the best? What, what is it you about? You see when you wake up in the morning and then you, you, you see that beautiful smile and then... You just know that your day is going to be great because the end smiles at you. you know? All right. she, she smiles even now. Okay, yeah, thanks, so for that. thanks for that. Thanks for that. That beautiful smile just turns everything around. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Wendile. Thank you. I'm going to take a chance and maybe get your husband to call in. Mark, let's see if he's listening. I'm not sure if he is, by the way. Or just <laughs> he another works day that you're doing. Oh, wait, he works one, too one, hard. Anybody related to Leanne Manners who wants to say hi to her cousin? Or family member, or whatever, you can certainly do so. Irvin in Nelspruit, hi. Hi, Aisha, how are you? I'm very good, man. Yeah, go for it. I was almost tempted to say hi, Lien and Vuyo. Well, I, I heard you, <laughs> the, the V coming out. Yeah, right. yeah, listen, I am never late at work. My uh, normal day starts at 8. My, uh, my working time starts at 8. But I wake up at around 5 to go to the shower to make sure that by 6 o'clock. I'm nice and cool. I'm sitting back on my couch to watch my beautiful screen. And you guess who is there? <laughs> Leanne Manas. Oh, you are. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I am never late, Leanne. And I like the way you bullet the news in actual fact. Your voice as well, it fits in well. Everything that you're doing, it's super duper. I say, may you please go on to well. You are so kind. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank, and I'll be, oh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be with you at six tomorrow morning as well. Thank you. <laughs> there you are. Nice stuff, right? Okay, let's get another one. Terry from uh, Welcome. Hi, Terry. Hello. Yeah. Um, is Leanne there? Yes. yes. Hi, Hi, Terry. Hi. Um, hello, Lee. Terry here from Welcome. Hi, Terry. Uh, is that Ashraf there with you? Yes, of course. Mm. Oh well, I can talk to you both. You, you both run, run such. Uh, magnificent programs, and I just they gave, they gave me your phone number, and I thought I'd better ring and say congratulations on a good job, both of you. Oh well, thank you. Thank so you much. very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is, is that it? Okay. Well, that, that's not just it. That's very important, isn't it? I yeah. suppose it is. It's of very course, important. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, it's, it's nice when a person like that takes. The, well, all of them, in fact, take the time yes. out to. It's amazing. To say well done on, on work. Pe- people are amazing. I must say. You know, I mean, you look at the average South African, and they just are. Everybody wants to be good, and everybody wants to say po- something positive. Um, although I know there's lots of negative out there, I know that. I mean, I'm not living in a dream world, but yeah. I must say, in general, uh, South Africans are warm. They're welcoming. They try and be nice. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we have it in us to be horrible, but it's it's unfortunately right. now, circumstances now, you, you that make us that People way. ask you lots of questions, and you sort of switch off, but. How many of them not just comment about your work, but but ask you specific things about what you did on the day or a week later? Like, you know, for example, you interviewed so and so. I've got answers for you or or they've got their own story. You know, they might as well speak to a wall because (laughs) I promise you you, and 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 I hope you are the same. (laughs) You interview so many people and you meet so many different people on a daily basis. And we're not talking. I mean, we, we are talking four or five interviews a morning and yeah, so it's, it's, it's every day and it's hectic it's one after the next after the next and then you'll get somebody that'll stop you and ask you you know three weeks ago you interviewed somebody or even a, f- a month two months a year ago and you sit there and I look at them and I'm like oh my goodness I, don't know. I, I have no idea <laughs> you know when you're in the moment when you are doing the interview you that's it it consumes my every sort of little bit of attention but once it's over it's over it's done it's what, finished. What, what makes you good um 
Wow. Okay. That puts me on the spot. So I assume I am good. And then I have to say why. You know why? I think it's it's something that I've, if, I, I genuinely have an interest in what I do. When I'm interviewing somebody, and it doesn't matter what I'm interviewing you about, mm -hmm. I am genuinely interested in what you're saying. Um, I think I come in from a very normal South African perspective. I don't pretend to know everything. I don't know everything. So when I'm asking you a question, I'm genuinely asking you a question from a South African does, that does doesn't that help? know. I mean, does it help it that does. you know a lot or that you know less? Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I obviously know my, I know my stuff, but when I'm asking, I'm asking from a South African, a normal South African's perspective. And, and that's how I managed to survive in business because that was, mm. when I say business, I mean in financial journalism and in business news because that's where I started my career. I had no idea what was going on. And when I was asking traders or brokers a question, I was genuinely asking this question because I didn't know. And the viewers really took to it because business can be exceptionally intimidating and people don't understand it. And I think it's a lesson that I've learned that I've just carried on through in my career. So when I'm interviewing you, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, I'm genuinely in very very interested but, but, but what happens when you ask a question that uh, let's just get an example if, if you ask someone from international relations like what, what does BRICS mean um, I mean are you asking because and assuming you don't well because you don't know mm. does it not come across then as like holy come on she should be knowing that by now look I don't think I would ever ask a question like that um, <laughs> I mean I would you know I I know my stuff, but when I ask the question, I'm going to give a little bit of background and I'm not going to assume that everybody knows everything because they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and the point is, is that when you are interviewing somebody, um, I want to walk away learning something and I certainly want the viewer to walk away learning something. And I want it to be a successful interview and not every interview is successful. It really isn't. And that's the frustrating part of what I do because on morning television, you've got four or five minutes to interview somebody on one of the most important aspects mm -hmm. uh, in our lives. I mean, let's, let's take the education crisis, of for course. instance. I would love to put the education minister on the spot for a half an hour, 45 minutes and go and, and you've got go like six minutes maybe and hammer. Right? But no, you've got five minutes, six minutes to try and hammer and to try and get answers and to try and understand how education can be taken so lightly. So, so do I take it that in, in fact, you probably feel very frustrated because yes, because you never get done with things. No, and you're fighting with your producer to it say does. I need two more minutes, and they're fighting with you to cut off two more minutes. You know, our directors have now taken on this. This um, it's 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 almost like they've they've taken a lesson from the Oscars because you know when when you're running out of when, mm. when the the actor or the director whoever's won the award is taking too long to speak and they mm. start playing music under their voices yeah, yeah. to try and cut them <laughs> off that's what our directors have started doing now oh, to just cut Boya and myself off stop talking we've got to go to an ad break and that's unfortunate but you know it's the nature of the program it's fast it's pacey mm. um, there's no time to dwell Right, Leanne Mann is with me in the spotlight, the anchor of Morning Live. Uh, lots of things we want to talk about, not just your work. I mean, what, what for you is your is your unfinished business? Um, unfinished business? Well, at the moment, motherhood. Mm, this course, is hugely yeah. unfinished business for me. I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've still got a, a, a son who's about to turn three years old. So mm -hmm. that's, I, I think I'm only about to become a parent now, as, mm -hmm. as opposed to just being a slave for okay. changing nappies and, and making food. And in career? Career-wise... Unfinished business for me is to have my own show. Mm -hmm. uh, when I mean my own show, I want to have a say in the content. I want to produce. I want to So the indulge. director can't tell you five minutes. Exactly. I want 30 minutes. I want to indulge in my guest. I want to do what you're doing. I want mm -hmm. to, 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 to dig deep into somebody and find out. And, you know, sometimes… So why, why have you not done that? It, it's coming. Mm -hmm. It'll come. I've never rushed anything in my life. Um, and I and and I think people can tell from the fact that I've been on this on on Morning Live going on for nine years now. I didn't think I'd last this long, but it's it's always something that I do. When I start something, I do it properly, and I keep going until I know is the time to move on. And when I can feel that right, it's it's over now. You know, it's, it's is it is it over now? I don't no. know. I I don't I don't know. I I I will have to answer that in a few. In a, in a few months' time, it's not over for okay. me yet. But the plan now is you're certainly coming back after. Absolutely, after I'm, I'm not mm. going anywhere. Definitely not. Not for now. Not for okay. now. But the, but the, my my career in television and broadcasting, I certainly hope is nowhere near over. Because mm. one of the things I meant to ask you is like, the fact that you got into into this industry through financial journalism, you I mean since you then got into morning life for a long period now, you haven't 
You haven't done what, what, what Siki has done. You know, Siki presents the morning talk Absolutely. show. Absolutely. We started she together. She does this. She then does other things. She yeah. gets involved in, in another TV show, some business shows, and then gets in and out. But you, you haven't, once you've done morning live or since you've done that, and I suppose probably because it's so all consuming because of the time factor that there's no time for anything else. I think if, if anybody, no, 100%, and if anybody knows me, I, I, um, I landed up in business journalism because it was an opportunity to get into television. I never studied business journalism. I, in fact, didn't know anything about business. I walked into my job on television knowing what the rand was and the dollar. Mm, that mm, wasn't a hell of a lot to go with. But um, I, I was a drama student. You know, I'd, I'd gotten honors in English, and I'm a qualified speech and drama teacher, and I, I studied uh, communications and journalism. But I'd never touched finance. I didn't know anything about it. And I was suddenly offered this job because, um, you know, my obviously the, the television people saw this, this ability in me that thought, okay, well, I think we can use her. This girl we can use. Let's put her onto television. And I said, no. I did said, hang say on no? a second. No, I'm not ready. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I then did a, diplo a, a postgraduate diploma in economics journalism. Okay. I reported. I made them send me out on stories as a reporter as opposed to an anchor in studio. And, and I, I spoke to analysts. I read the Business Day and every other financial newspaper and magazine that you possibly could, I could lay my hands on. And, you know, I just tried to empower myself with the knowledge, and I did. And I, and so, I, so, so I got now, it. How many papers do you read daily? Um, I, I mean read. I don't mean just quick flip through. Yeah. I, every single one of them. I sit there with them. Um, to be honest, actually, I'm lying because I'm, I'm probably speaking about a few years ago mm. when I used to only rely on the newspapers for news. But unfortunately, it's Twitter these days. So there are other ways of consuming. I sit them, in makeup with my cell phone hovering over my eyes reading. And, you know, I've, I've sort of I follow every international news network just so that I can check what happened overnight, what's going on um, locally, everywhere. And, and that's where I pick up all my news. So before I get on air. I am. Got a good idea I'm basically done, and by the time happening. I do read the newspapers, I'm, I'm just reaffirming what I've already read. Okay, some lots of uh, lots of people wanting to talk to you and certainly comment as well. Uh, Lerato, I think it is Lerato, Leroro saying, Ashraf, you are hosting my, my mum's favourite. Keep up the good work. Oh. my sister, that's to you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Lies. Thank you. Leanne, I also thought uh, you're pregnant. They thought you're pregnant. You okay? see, <laughs> and uh, you no longer give us newspaper headlines, but you should always. You always have them on your table. Why? From Motopi. Interesting question. Why don't we give the newspaper so headlines? You don't give newspaper headlines, but you always have them on your table. We we read the newspapers. Um, okay. You know, it's a, it's a, it's 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 something we've always. I've always asked that question as well. Why don't we always have like a segment where we look at the newspapers and we mm, talk mm, about the newspapers? Mm, mm. And uh, you know, a lot of our, our editors of they divided on this of whether we should or we shouldn't, you know, as, as, as it's what steal we two are. Minutes from somewhere else. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's a matter of sometimes newspapers get it wrong. And when we are putting it up, we are almost reporting on it saying that we believe the same thing, yeah, even yeah. though it is coming out of one of the newspapers. So we don't necessarily, you know, we've got our own news and we, we do our news, but we obviously need to read all different forms of, of, of the news that's out there in the morning. So it's it's a strange way of thinking, but that's how some of the editors do, that's what they believe, and that's that's the ruling that we follow. Unless, of course, it is something like amazing photographs or things that we know that's happened. But if it's an expose by a newspaper, we don't. Then you want to hold back. You rather. kind of hold back just mm, in case mm, mm, it's found mm, to mm. not be such an expose. So, in one of the papers, like uh, Angie Motecha, they said that she lied. I mean, that's the type of thing you say. Hold it. Hold better Double sec. check on well, the facts on this one. That's here. A, it's not our it, it's not our contact saying that. That's a newspaper, right. so you don't really want to advocate. Leanne it. Men is with me. It's about quarter to uh, quarter to four. In fact, in the in the spotlight, there's a another interesting one. Mel Mel in Tombella saying, "Can't wait. I I love her." Uh, strong words for you, wow. John Morris saying, "Does she have any input regarding?" A morning live wardrobe, or does she enjoy being dressed in grey every morning? I don't, I don't wear grey. I've seen her wear red. She's, but there's more. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> grey does her an injustice. I morning was wearing grey this morning. Oh, okay. Come on. So morning live is in need of some colour besides grey. Anyway. Uh, okay. Who, wh who's that again? That's from from John Morris. Okay, John. Thank you for your thank you for your comments. But I promise you, I was just wearing grey this morning. <laughs> I try, and balance my wardrobe as much as I can. But I, I have to be honest with you, John. At the moment. Balance and pregnancy, they don't go hand in hand. It's very, very limited wardrobe at the moment. So I'm just of course. sort of wearing uh, but, but in general, you know, in, in a typical year, what what input gets into your wardrobe? Your I dress myself. What? I know I dress myself. Um, I have my own 
sort of clothing sponsor that's mm-hmm. come on board and sponsors me. Who, uh, who sponsors Pol- you? Polo. Okay. Polo right. Clothing, mm-hmm. a wonderful South African brand, and I'm mm-hmm. very happy to have them. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they give me clothing, and I sort of wear their clothes. So I'm quite lucky that I have that because it's a very expensive exercise. And, you know, you'll see, you'll see, you'll get, you'll, you'll get guys like John that will see. Oh, my gosh. And they pick up. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. wearing gray again. And, and <laughs> she I probably wore it like once every two weeks. I'll wear like a gray suit. I'll try really hard not to wear it all okay. the time. But it's which, just, which may be a good, it's, it's a good tough. time for, for you to, to say this. What's the one thing that people don't know about you that, that you just love to share? Um, what do I, well, they don't know about they me. They don't know there's misconceptions. This could be one of them, of course, right? I, you know, I think, I don't know if, People may, may know um, I'm quite I'm a very casual person, very very casual. I mean, you, you can see what I'm wearing today. You know, just mm-hmm. you know. So striped grey top. Okay, top, this I think was it is. it's a jersey. A jersey, right? Grey and navy. We've taken some please. pictures, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you have no makeup on. We've You're taken some pictures, bad with which, the are, which I'll post the pictures onto Facebook as well as on Twitter. Okay, but okay, so carry on. A bit yeah. of a ca- quite a casual individual. I'm I'm not as serious as I come across on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I got a sort of more of a sense of humor i think than than i may put across but then again i i think i think as much as i can joke with where i do and that's why we've got such a nice relaxed um, relationship with mm-hmm. one another mm-hmm. and um yeah i, I just I, i'm very much so what you see is what you get I, there's not too many pretenses about me really mm-hmm. there isn't how how yeah let, let's just talk just quickly about about you and for you i mean the the in in, in a co-anchor situation that that synergy has got to work isn't it it, it has to it's yeah. not even how, negotiable. How, how, I mean, did you guys have to work at it where you, because obviously you didn't choose each other to yeah. co-present. Somebody else did that. Yes. But once it came that you guys were going to be together, I think Vuya was with, with Michelle Garfield before, if I'm not mistaken. But once it was that you can be together, did you have this chat to each other to say, we're going to work at it? Or it's like, let's see what happens. No. We or never, I don't like you. Something we like ne- that. We <laughs> never had a chat. In fact, the first time we worked together was not on Morning Live. It was during the elections yes, right. in 2004. Mm. And it was quite mind-blowing to see how we sat down and started working. And it just worked. It just worked. And, and I think that that was, the, that was the answer to any production manager's questions as to whether Leanne is the right person to take over Morning Live. Um, and and we, it, we just clicked. Um, I don't think there's a, there isn't a conflict for attention. I, I don't mind. You know, for me, I, I'm doing what I do. And it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not a battle to see who can say the most and who gets more airtime and okay. who does what. And I, for me, I don't. If, if it was, it would be a problem. I think that that mm-hmm. can be a problem. You know, when you're dealing with two massive egos, I don't think that that's going to work. But when you give, um, I'll never forget, I, I had such a brilliant training ground when I was working at Summit Television. Mm-hmm. I co-anchored with Jeremy Maggs okay, for, right, for right. about a year and a half. And he was a great mentor to me. And I mean, he would always say to me, the more you give your co-anchor, the more you give back. And that's something that I will always remember. And, and that's why, for me, it's not a fight. It's, it's just a matter of working together. And, and you're amazed at the results. Mm. And by the way, I mean, the one thing Jer- Jeremy's taught me, because obviously I worked with him as well, that I've learned, and, and I'll just say this very quickly, he said, there was an interview that he had to do with someone and he said, Ashraf, I'm out of my depth on this interview. Yes. I need advice. Yes. And when someone has done as much as he has done, can admit that I know nothing. It's a big that thing. That he tells you, we, we can't think we know everything. And you know? we don't. Mm-hmm. We don't, and we don't, and and we don't pretend to. I, I certainly don't pretend to know everything. I don't even try and pretend okay. to so know. Someone we think knows everything is probably the news reader. So let's find <laughs> out what's going on in the news right now at three thirty. By the way, lots of SAFM presenters are out at Gramstown over the next uh, week, in fact. So we'll be there from, uh, well, Thursday afternoon and then Friday. I'll be there on Friday posting the show and then the Sunday morning show as well. And I think we're going to do something on, on the Rhodes University, which is where, where Leanne studied, and looking at the media aspects of that as well later on. oh eight nine one one zero four two seven. Leanne Manners in the spotlight. Might be time for two more calls. If you want to call in, do so, uh, do so right away. There's a tweet that I want to pick up on in just a second. Leanne, the one thing I know is that you have lots of views on many things, right? So, so what's the one thing you want to get off your chest? The one thing, I'm, and, and the same thing, you've got the platform. <laughs> okay, the the one thing I want to get off my chest. Gosh, now you're really putting me on the spotlight. I don't, I don't even know. There's so <laughs> many things I want to. get Well, maybe there's three. You can go for three. Well, what are we talking about? Are we just talking it, about? It doesn't it? matter what it is. I mean, you, you've got a platform. Okay. It could be politics. It could be education. It could be poverty. It could be oh, all of those. Malema. It could be whatever you feel like. No, luckily Malema's not there anymore. No, he's he's not on. He's I don't have. Don't don't have anything to say about Malema, but crime. I have something to say about. 
it's devastating. It's devastated a lot of people's mm, lives. Mm, mm. <clears throat> it devastated my life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's that's one thing that I'm very, very outspoken about and very aggressive towards. Um, education. Oh, and I think it comes from from an individual like myself who, you know, in my life when I when I I was very privileged. And I, when I mean the word privilege, I don't mean I come from the wealthiest family who, you know, just I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. But I was when it came to education, I was born with a silver spoon okay. in my mouth so because you, so you had the breaks. Yeah. My pa my parents ensured that they gave my brother and myself the best education that they possibly could. And that was how they spoiled us. And and that is you cannot take it away from me. Um, you can take anything away from me, but you cannot take that. And that's what I I get so upset about the education crisis that lives in this country. And mm -hmm. I wish we could do something more Indeed, about yeah. that. Someone, Sia is asking a question, which is very relevant, which is because I often get people who, who assume that, that you're Greek. And of course, you're married to a Greek guy now. Yes. And, uh, and Cypriot that's Greek, that, please. That, Cypriot that, Greek, otherwise Cypriot I'm in trouble. Greek, okay, so not Greece, Greece, but Cyprus. Okay? Yes, yes. But, but Leanne is a lab, okay? And, I'm and a by lab. See us <laughs> saying, is Leanne still in contact with the family members in Lebanon? Uh, which I think is interesting. You yeah. know, my parents arrived back from Lebanon um, a week and a half ago. But they, but they live here, right? No, my yeah. parents live here. They were right. born here. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we firmly rooted as South Africans. Um, it was my great, my great grandparents and, and half of my grandparents that were born, one, one set that were born in Lebanon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise, the others were born here, but all my great grandparents from there backwards were born in Lebanon. So okay. I, w you know, I'm very much so South African. I unfortunately I don't even, I don't even speak Lebanese except for all the slang yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. else that goes with it. But you know, we we still try and keep up the traditions in terms of cooking the food and the religion and um, mm, mm, and you know the and of family. course you're Lebanese Christian, right? Because Maronite. of course many many Lebanese are you know again Maronite and you get yes. sort of Druze and of course you get Muslims maybe fifty sixty percent are Muslims Huge. as well. Absolutely, indeed, in a very very small country. Yeah, yeah. it's a mm. tiny country. Beautiful country, mm. though. It's absolutely mm. magnificent. I think people would be pleasantly surprised if they had to see what Beirut looked like. I mean, my, my parents were actually, funnily enough, we were at them for lunch yesterday, and we were doing a whole sort of a photo spread of what okay. Lebanon looks like. And right, it, yeah. it looked amazing, so modern. The high-rise buildings, the hotels, the restaurants, the the clubs, the nightlife, the Paris of the Middle East, as they yeah, used to indeed. call it. That's what it and called, it's, yeah. it's, it's stunning. It's really So beautiful. do you have any family in Lebanon? Yes, we do. We have got some family in Lebanon still. The most resilient people we know, you know, they get bombed and they build themselves up again. They get bombed and they build themselves up again. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's quite crazy what they go through. But I suppose they look at us and say, gee whiz, how do you go through what you go through? Indeed, indeed. Yeah? Well, it, well, it gets me thinking then, then in terms of your career, because I'm talking career as opposed to personal, what, can you, you've done lots of things. You've interviewed some of the most formidable people in the world. What, what for you has been like, if you can call it the best day of your presenting life? I, I th uh, and maybe days, if, if days are a bit hard, I can understand that. Yeah. Are they, they would, uh, there's two days and, and I sound like a stuck record, but I, I is this a... Sorry, I know it's afternoon, but but please take it from when it's the, where it comes from. Sure. I climaxed early in my career. Oh my goodness! With who? <laughs> okay, let's let, let let me elaborate now. With Oprah, I think okay. that was that was something when I got a phone call from SABC, um, the, the 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 management at SABC, to ask the question. I mean, they even asked the question. Would you like to interview okay. Oprah Winfrey? I'm like, sorry, um, <laughs> let's let's just, yeah, I think I would. I'd really love that. So, she is, um, and and always has been. A was huge, this was this in studio year, or you had to go somewhere? No, else? we went to we went to where she was delivering her speech, and okay. and we were given a half an hour one on one interview oh, with fantastic. her. I mean, that was just it was it yeah. blew my mind. And please remember, this was my second, not even I hadn't even been on Morning Life for a year. It okay. was you know it suddenly just, it just yeah. all came crashing down on me. The following week, I interviewed Madiba, yeah. and that was again I you know. Um, Nyanam, so what, what did you think about about yourself? Oh, no, I thought I was just, I mean, I was floating on another crowd. That's why I'm saying I climaxed early. Yeah. Everything in comparison pales. <laughs> the big O causes the climax. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. The O&M. But I mean, you know, interviewing Mandela was, was also just something 
phenomenal. This was at his house and it was his mm. birthday and we had a whole bunch of school children there and we still had the opportunity to interview him. I did, however, meet him the week before that because I was appointed a 4666 Which is also, and you still are, Huge. right? Huge. Yeah. I think it's something that just stays with you forever. You know, it's just a title that you carry around and with pride and, 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 and that's about it. But um, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, those, that, those were two days in my life that, wow, nothing can compare to it when it comes to career. Oprah and Madiba. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out what else can top it. If anything, there's a wish list there. Reggie in, in Soweto, hi. Reggie, hi, you're on the air. I'm all right. Uh, uh, thank you. Pleasure. Uh, you know, I've been holding on for 25 minutes. Wow. No, I, don't, I didn't see that. I would anyway, like three minutes. I would like minutes. to say, you know, we, I love, you know, uh, Lien. So thank much you. that, you know, she's become a a motivational speaker to me. That is so okay. sweet. Mm. Reggie, thank you. you. You know, I wish every time, um, you, you know, you know, Vuyo says, uh, Titi knows the weather. I wish you could say it. She knows the weather. And she knows the weather. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank All you, right. Reggie. Nice, nice call again. Thank you. It? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 you obviously have a huge impact on people. We yeah. do. Mm -hmm. I, we, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're waking up first thing in the morning, I mean, you, you're in people's most intimate space that you could mm -hmm. possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any other program that's as intimate as Morning Live. Yeah. Yeah. You're in yeah. people's bedrooms, for goodness sakes. You're in bed with them. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. I am possibly the first woman in a man's life or in another it's woman's true. life. It's you know, true. Yeah. it's a strange yeah. way of looking at it, but it mm -hmm. is. They'll put on the television and there you are, whether they're in a good mood or a bad mood, you know. But we've we've had... Gosh, I mean, I've, I've had some interesting phone calls of some, some one woman got hold of me and she just said uh, she was suffering from depression and insomnia and all of these, <laughs> these terrible things that us humans unfortunately do go through. And she just says, you know, when that's six o'clock, when, when the clock strikes six and she hears that opening theme song for Morning Live, she just knows, okay, okay, they're coming, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. It's a new wow. day. I made it through the night. We're okay. That's a huge responsibility. It is. Eh? And then there's yeah. those, you know, she sees Vuyas and Leanne smile and, and it's just, it's, there you go. It's okay. So, so do you ever feel that when you're not there, when you take days off or whatever, right, that you, you're almost letting the country down, keeping in mind this type of, this type of message from this woman? I know? wonder. I've never really thought about it, mm. but there are times when, yes, it is. I have, mm. I've been told it, but, um, Sometimes you just you just need to take a break. Of but, course but you yeah, do. Yeah. Well, true. Um Abdullah is saying, um, uh, Ashraf interviewing Leanne. I love her great interview. So there we are another another clear supporter of, you. of yours. Yeah. The, the worst day on the, air. Worst day on air. Mm -hmm. um, what was the worst day on air? I think I. And the worst day could be either because there's drama or because yeah. there's your presentation that's gone wrong. You know. There've been. A, I mean, there have been a few worst horrible days but I, I think one of the most difficult days for me was when when I went back to work I'd um I'm getting back to the crime incident and, and I did I did warn I, I did warn the listeners that I am very vocal about crime mm. and how much I'm totally against it but anyway I had taken a week off work because I couldn't actually face going into work I then went in and um it was quite difficult facing the cameras again but I was reading the news that day, I'll never forget, and that was the day that I read that Lucky Dube was shot dead yes, right, outside yes. his house, and that yeah. was the first day that I went back to work. Wow! It was Goodness. one of the most mm. difficult things that I've ever done, was to just sit there and read this and feel what I was feeling inside, because a lot of the times people think that newsreaders are just machines. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know we're more than just newsreaders on mm, Morning Live, mm, but at the mm. end of the day, when you're reading that news bulletin, nothing affects you you have to just keep on going and reading the news like like you're reading a story to anybody and not have any emotion a part of this and and that was very difficult because i was really i was popping rescue rescue drops in my mouth to try and sort of just get <laughs> through this the anxiety i was how, going how through. did you cope i mean did you have somebody put their arms around you no not at all nothing like it's that also, it's large it's a, you don't have much time nothing it? it's a mental thing i walked off set i sort of had tears in my eyes just because i was thinking this is ridiculous what are we doing to ourselves? What are we doing to this country? But um, you got to pull yourself together mm, and get mm, back in front of those cameras like nothing's wrong. Do, do you agree now that your, your, your Leanne Manners is very much a brand? I think so. I, I mean, absolutely. Mm, mm, I think mm. Ashraf Gada is a brand. Everybody that when you come out onto any form of a, um, a media 
a broadcast platform or whatever platform, you, you do become a brand and you have to look after that brand. I've worked very hard at my brand. Um, just, to, you know, to I, I live a very clean life and I, I live a life that I'm proud of. And I've, I've, I've never stabbed anybody in the back. I've never done something that I'm ashamed of in my career to get ahead. I have gotten to where I have gotten because of sheer hard work, determination, lots of sweat, lots of tears, lots of laughter and lots mm, of happiness mm, and good mm. times and bad times. But it has been hard work and, and I'm proud of how I've achieved what I've achieved. I, and I can say that with, with no fear of contradiction from anybody. And, and I'm sure there are days that you reflect on your life and say, I can't believe how much I've done. There's, I, and yeah. one of my biggest character defaults or faults of my character is the fact that I'm, I never pat myself on the back and say, wow, Leanne, well done. Mm. Can't believe it. I actually, <laughs> because if you had to see what Leanne was like as a child, you would never <laughs> believe that Leanne would be doing what she's doing. I was the most shy and sipid character really, you'd yeah. ever meet in your life. Mm. But I didn't think that I'd be able to be sitting on national television and radio talking to you and, mm, and mm, having a career mm, that mm. is that has enabled to me, me to grow up. And I have grown up in okay. front of live television. We've got, we got 45 seconds. I'll, I'll rush this one here. Uh, maybe three quick ones. A quote that you that you love sharing with us, uh, a book that, that you think we must read. And, and, uh, and do you actually have... Um, uh, an autobiography plan for you, and if so, what would you title it? Would you oh. like forty-five seconds? My, like forty-five it? seconds to tell you all of that. Um, <laughs> the autobiography, I suppose, would. If, I love the title of the book "While You Were Sleeping" because people don't realize how much we go through to get the broadcasting mm -hmm. to you. Uh, so, "While You Were Sleeping" in the early hours of the morning could be the the autobiography. A quote that I love by. I wish I could look at the bottom of my email because it's doing something like that. I think it's something about. Um, okay. well, well, if you remember it, just let me know. Just I'll let you know. On. Listen, yeah. I don't have time, but it, it yeah. is there. Something about living your best life. And uh, the book, I think a wonderful book is The Circle of Life by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Very okay. interesting the circle, read. The Circle of Life. Yeah. Okay. I, I said it's, it's over, but let's, I have to touch on this one. The, your store, it's called... Yes, Simply what, Manners. Simply Manners. Simply Manners Gift Emporium in Sanson City. Okay. Yeah. I, I always thought, why don't you call it Good Manners? Because uh, you're good at what you do. But it's not my own. It doesn't. It's with my sister-in-law. <laughs> so they, it's just the Simply Manners girls. That's okay, it. Okay, so there you are. Simply Manners, and that's the story of Santon. Leanne, it's been great chatting to you. There's Thank lots you, more, of sure. course, I want to ask you, but that's not the idea. We'll leave it for the next one. You along, and you have lots more in your career to go. Thanks for allowing us to put you in the spotlight. Thank you for having me. Indeed, 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 the spotlight. Thank you.